It's March 25th here in Seoul and I'm Kim Dami. We begin with these stories making the headlines at this hour. Starting with the prolonged medical stalemate here in the country. President Yoon suk has ordered officials to come up with flexible measures to manage the doctor's walkout, especially with their license being suspended. Professors at medical schools nationwide are set to submit their resignation letters starting today. Four gunmen arrested for the deadly Moscow concert hall attacks on Friday appeared in court on Sunday, as Russia observed a day of mourning for the 137 people that died. Islamic State claimed responsibility and released horrific video footage to social media channels. Israel has reportedly agreed to a U.S. proposal on a prisoner hostage exchange, which would mean the release of around 700 Palestinian prisoners in exchange for 40 Israeli hostages. President Yoon suk says his administration will devise flexible ways to deal with the process of suspending the medical licenses of those doctors who are taking part in the mass walkouts. Now, professors at medical schools are set to step down starting today. Our Kim jong sheol search us off. Right before suspending the license of junior doctors taking part in the mass walkouts in the country, it seems the government has softened its stance. On Sunday, President Yoon suk yeol ordered Prime Minister Han dok su to consult the ruling People Power Party to, quote, flexibly take care of the situation, referring to the handling of suspending doctors taking part in the walkout. He also ordered the Prime Minister to create a constructive council to push for dialogue with the medical professionals. Following the president's order, the prime minister's office released a statement later in the day saying the government would set a date for the PM to sit down with medical professionals as soon as possible. The president's order came after ruling People Power Party chief Han Dong-hun requested the presidential office on Sunday to flexibly handle the administrative suspension of doctors after talking with officials of the Medical Professors Association of Korea. Professors of medical schools who were going to submit resignations starting Monday have decided to hold an emergency meeting amid the sudden shift in the atmosphere. The emergency committee of the country's top medical school, Seoul National University College of Medicine, released a statement saying it's a positive sign that the government has suggested creating a council for constructive discussion. The statement added that it hopes the government will swiftly come up with concrete plans for the council and further review its current plan to increase medical school student enrollment by 2000 next year. Kim Jong-sil, Arirang News. In addition to trainee doctors, medical school professors here in South Korea are also submitting their resignations today. What options do doctors have left now? We're joined by Professor Song se for more. Hello there. Hello, I can hear you now. Perfect. Professor Song, doctors have also reduced their working hours to 52 hours per week. Starting today, is this move against the law? No, actually, uh, Korea has a labor law and has a maximum hours of uh, labor. So uh, doctors are relying on that law to say that uh, we will uh, work at the maximum allowed by the law, which is 52 hours. Now, there are exceptions, but they are uh, relying on that uh, uh, legislation to say that they are uh, under the Korean law, laborers, so uh, their 52 hours is a illegal move for them. Sure. Now, what's on the agenda is that the licenses of those doctors who are refusing to return to duty will be suspended starting tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Now, what would it take to get their license back then? I mean, what can they do? Well, in the past, we have seen government uh, taking a stronger stance of uh, taking away or revoking their licenses. Uh, sometimes they just threaten to do so. Uh, in part, they implemented it before. Now, it all depends on whether the, their order to go back to work uh, is legal. I mean, there were some uh, administrative challenges from the doctors. Uh, the outcome is pretty uh, uncertain at this point. But in the end, uh, after administrative challenges and uh, legal lawsuits, probably it'll come down to a political uh, uh, resolution, just like before. I mean, w when the government threatened to revoke their licenses, 
in the end, uh, because of the the agreement they uh, reached, they didn't do so. They uh, took away their uh, threats. And I, I think that the, the, the resolution that both parties actually are looking for is whether there would be some sort of middle ground so that uh, it will be a... a a, a justifiable for the government to do so, and also the doctors will get their job back. Right. That's why President Yoon Sagar over the weekend said, uh, called on officials to come up with, you know, so-called flexible ways to deal with the process of suspending their licenses. Now, on top of that, the government made sure to note uh, that trainee doctors who have left your work here in the country will not be able to get their license abroad in, a di in different countries. Now, is that so? How does that work? Well, the licensing system is different in each country. So even if this is not the the case, uh, well, probably it would be difficult to get their licenses. Even if there are some recipro reciprocities uh, that applies to those doctors, probably uh, the, the Korean doctors would face a, a, a situation where uh, their license were revoked and suspended, uh, which is tantamount to a kind of a black mark on their uh, qualifications. So it will be difficult in, in many different fronts uh, to get the, their uh, board exams passed, but even with the reciprocities, probably they will not get the, 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 the recommendations from uh, government and their public record of getting their licenses revoked in Korea would be a bar or a difficulty for them. Definitely. Now, the country's health ministry just half an hour ago announced an additional 200 military doctors and public doctors will be dispatched starting today. Now, Professor Song, I want to ask you, what happens if there are medical accidents? I mean, will they be held responsible, those public doctors? Uh, there will be a very difficult question. Now, the, in the past, the Supreme Court in Korea uh, said that uh, in normal cases, the public doctors, military doctors, when they have medical uh, accidents, that responsibility falls on the government because they were carrying out their duties, their public duties. But in this case, they're, they're putting into uh, in an emergency situation to uh, the hospital's that are not under government control. So the government uh, already said that the well, the responsibility would be falling on the hospitals and the, the medical institutions they work for. Now, I, I think that's uh, pretty debatable. And, and uh, if any accident happens, the ho hospital would say, well, these are, not the, these are not the doctors we hired. When we hire doctors, we uh, examine their qualifications, and we also take into account to what kind of risk we're uh, taking on. But in this case, those doctors were imposed on us. So that argument would be uh, very uh, plausible uh, in terms of determining who the responsibility party is. I, I think if that happens, I think that will go to the court. Right. That's, it sounds like that's when things get trickier. Now, I'm sure that would apply the same to nurses who have taken some of the duties usually undertaken by doctors. Would you say it's the same? Well, it's the same. I think that uh, this is, uh, in, my, in my mind, the clearer because nurses' actions, even if they perform uh, medical uh, the practices or the actions that are tantamount to doctors, that has been performed under the supervision of the doctors. So without the doctors, they, they will be doing, uh, performing medical activities against the law. So there would be a lot of uh, accusations and also the controversies, uh, not only from the doctors, but from the, what we're talking about, the responsibilities and liabilities point of view, whether the nurses by law or by training are uh, suitable to take on some of the doctor's duties. All right, Professor Song, thank you so much for your insight to this morning. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.
Four gunmen have appeared in court for their involvement in the terror attack at a Moscow concert hall that killed over 130 people on Friday. And despite ISIS claiming responsibility for the attack, Russian President Vladimir Putin hinted at possible involvement by Ukraine. Eason Jasmoir. Four gunmen appeared before a Russian court on Sunday, charged over the terrorist attack on the Crocus City Concert Hall in Moscow Friday night that left at least 137 dead. According to Russia's TASS news agency, all four gunmen were identified as citizens of Tajikistan and were remanded in custody for two months. The court released photos of the suspects, with one appearing to have a black eye, while another was seen in a wheelchair. The four gunmen are facing charges of a terror attack committed by a group of individuals resulting in a person's death. Aside from the four individuals suspected of carrying out Friday's terror attack, seven others have also been arrested for their possible involvement. ISIS claimed responsibility for the attack, which it said was against Christians. And after Russian President Vladimir Putin hinted at possible involvement by Ukraine on Saturday, the terror group released a graphic body cam footage of the attackers on social media channels. Regarding the investigation of this crime and results of operational search actions, I can now say the following. All four of the actual performers of the act of terror, all those who shot and killed people were found and detained. They tried to hide and were moving in the direction of Ukraine. There, according to the preliminary data, they had a crossing of the border prepared from the Ukrainian side. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky slammed Putin and others in Moscow for linking the terror attacks to Kyiv, saying that the Russian leader was more concerned over blaming the attack on Ukraine rather than reassuring his own citizens. Meanwhile, Russia observed a national day of mourning on Sunday for the victims who died in the attacks. Friday's attack is now the deadliest IS-claimed terror attack on European soil and the deadliest attack by any group in Russia since the 2004 Beslan siege. South Korea's foreign ministry on Saturday offered condolences to the victims and their families. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. South Korean occult film Exuma surpassed 10 million cinema admissions on Sunday, becoming the first film released in South Korea in 2024 to do so. According to the film's distributor Showbox, the film reached the milestone on Sunday morning, just 32 days after release, becoming the 23rd Korean film to reach the 10 million admissions mark. The film, which was directed by Jang Jae-hyun, has held on to the number one spot at the box office since its release last month. It stars veteran actor Choi Min-sik and Kim Go-eun as two shamans who join forces to investigate mysterious occurrences affecting a wealthy family in the U.S. Now, over in the southern part of Korea, we can hear the delightful news of flowers starting to bloom around, the, around this time of the year. Choi Soo-hyung takes us there. Spring has begun in South Korea. Currently, the southern parts of the country are in full bloom with the various colors of spring. You can feel the spring breeze, particularly in the cities of Cholanamdo province, located around the Samjin River, one of the five largest in South Korea. Particularly, noteworthy are the villages in Kuregun County, Cholanamdo province. In these small villages, the bright yellow flowers of the Cornelian cherry dogwood, also known as Cornus flowers, or Sansuyu in Korean, are in full bloom. This area is home to many Sansuyu villages, accounting for over 70 percent of Korea's Sansuyu production. Due to climate change, despite the typical blooming season being in mid-March, Sansuyu flowers have been blooming earlier than usual for about three to four years now. According to the Kure County Office, they bloomed about one week earlier than usual this year, starting March 9th. Although they bloomed earlier this year, the Sansuyu corner flowers last longer than other flowers like plum blossoms, so you can enjoy the yellow waves until early April. Due to the last cold snap, cherry blossoms were also supposed to bloom this week, but haven't done so yet. However, tourists from across the country come to enjoy the spring by admiring the flowers blooming along the riverside. To be honest, I came to see the cherry blossoms, but not a single one had bloomed. So, I heard about the Sansuyu flowers blooming and decided to come. They were so yellow and incredibly beautiful. I'll have fun with my family.
I came here last year, but even this year, the Sansui village is still as beautiful as it was when I visited last year. It's still lovely. It's only the beginning to feel the spring vibes within the blooming corners Sansuyu village. Choi Soo-hyung, Arirang News, Gure. And another must-visit spot around this time of the year is Jeju Island. Our culture correspondent Song Yoo-jin shows us a taste of the island's springtime scene, particularly at a somewhat unique exhibition there. At the east end of South Korea's Jeju Island is a village called Gosong. Deep inside the village is this single-story building covered in vines. What's inside might blow your mind. So here, the Bunker de Lumiere Jeju was once a secret telecommunication bunker that managed Korea's submarine cable network in the 1980s. Now, after being closed for more than 20 years, it reopened as a digital art hall in 2018. The Bunker de Lumiere Jeju is the first immersive media art space to open in the country. And for its fifth exhibit, it's bringing the works of the late Russian-French artist Marc Chagall back to life. Chagall spent his final days in St. Paul de Vance by the Mediterranean Sea. We thought there was this connection between St. Paul de Vance's blue Mediterranean and its landscape with Jeju. So we thought people could better appreciate Chagall's artworks here. As soon as you step in, visitors are drawn into the world of Chagall, surrounded by a cocoon of sound and darkness. Chagall, Paris, New York, traces the artist's artistic journey to and from the two cities. Over 70 of its masterpieces have been recreated using 3D sound, laser video projectors, and lighting. The exhibition's music, ranging from classic, jazz, and klezmer, is what Chagall enjoyed listening to while drawing. But this is not all that the bunker offers. For the first time since opening, Bunker de Lumiere Jeju is showcasing the works of a Korean artist, Lee Wai Jong. Known as the artist of Jeju, Lee is a veteran artist who gained recognition through his efforts to modernize traditional Korean art, such as using acrylic paint on Korean paper hanji, wood carving, and installations. After moving from Seoul to Jeju in 1990, I began asking myself how I could be happier. I realized that happiness stems from within. The works shown in this exhibition have very vivid colors and focus on embracing positivity and finding joy in life's simple pleasures. This fusion of international and local artistry awaits in Jeju, inviting visitors on a journey through time and culture. Song Yujin, Arirang News, Jeju. Good morning, I'm Kim ji and now we turn off to stories from around the world. Israel on Sunday agreed to a U.S. proposed prisoner hostage exchange deal. If Hamas also agrees to this proposal made by the CIA, then Israel would release 700 Palestinian prisoners in exchange for 40 Israeli hostages. According to Israel's Khan News, 100 out of the 700 Palestinians to be exchanged are currently serving life sentences for killing Israeli nationals. The proposal was put forward by U.S. Central, Agency, Central Intelligence Agency Director William Burns, who was earlier in Qatar, where Hamas and Israel are in talks through mediators. The director of Israel's Mossad Intelligence Agency, David Barnier, was also in Doha twice in the past week for negotiations. While Israel earlier this month described Hamas's proposal of releasing 700 to 1,000 Palestinian prisoners to be ridiculous and absurd, Khan News reported that Israel is now ready to make significant compromises in order to return the abductees home. At a motorsport rally in Hungary on Sunday, four people were killed and at least eight injured when a race car drifted off the road and crashed into spectators. Out of the injured, two, including one child, are in hospital with life-threatening injuries. The crash took place during a race in northwest Hungary between the towns of Labatlan and Bajot. According to Hungary's National Ambulance Service, 
four rescue helicopters and eight ambulances were dispatched to the scene, where the rally race was immediately halted after the crash. Rally Hungary, which is part of the FIA, FIA European Rally Championship, was first organized in 2018. Iconic landmarks around the world switched off their lights for an hour on Saturday night to mark Earth Hour, a campaign to raise environmental awareness. France's Eiffel Tower, Australia's iconic Sydney Opera House and Harbour Bridge, Japan's Tokyo Tower, Barcelona's Sagrada Familia Cathedral and Rome's Colosseum were among the landmarks that went dark. Earth Hour is organized each year by the Worldwide Fund for Nature. It began in 2007 with Lights Out event in Sydney, Australia. Around 200 Parisian waiters walked the streets of Paris on Sunday as the city revived its historic cafe waiters race. The waiters, donning white shirts and traditional aprons, carried a croissant, cup of coffee and a glass of water for two kilometers around the streets of the French capital. Open to all waiters in Paris, the rules of the course des cafés are no running, nothing spilled or dropped, and that the tray is carried in one hand only. The winning waiter and waitress receive medals and a night stay at a fancy Parisian hotel. The race was first held in 1914 and continued until 2011 when the organizers failed to find sponsors. But with the sponsoring by Paris City Hall and Water Authority, it was revived this year. Good morning. After some very pleasant spring weather we had on the weekend in central regions, the weather is making another shift. Rain will start from the south coast, gradually spreading to the rest of the country as the day goes on and into Tuesday. Further south, we'll see heavier rainfall along with strong winds and thunderstorms. Meanwhile, mountainous regions in Gangwon-do will see up to 15 centimeters of snowfall. Seoul saw mid-May like warmth yesterday, but today's rain will put the brakes on unseasonably warm temperatures, cooling down nearly 10 degrees lower than Sunday in the capital. But southern provinces will have similar to slightly higher afternoon highs this afternoon. For a closer look, Daegu, Busan getting up to 13 degrees, Gwangju topping out at 15 degrees Celsius this afternoon. It will rain annoyingly enough to need an umbrella today before it all lets up tomorrow morning. Another band of rain is in the forecast at the end of the week, but it will get sunnier as we head towards the weekend. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. We thank you for watching New Day at Arirang. We'll be back tomorrow for our Tuesday's edition at the same time, 9 a.m. Korea time.